Thank you very much. Welcome to Introduction to Biblical Hebrew. Today we're going to be revising the last part of Lesson 8 and all of Lesson 9. Yesterday we started this revision. We looked at consonants used as long vowels, the consonants A, Wow, and Yo. A representing long A, Wow representing the, the long U sound and the long O sound, and Yo representing the long I sound and the long E sound. We close the class by looking at syllables, open syllables, meaning a syllable that consists of a consonant and ending in a vowel, usually a long vowel, and closed syllables consisting of consonant followed by a vowel and followed by another consonant, and usually the vowel is a short vowel, but it can be a long vowel if there is an accent over that closed syllable. I gave a preview of today's class when we looked at method. That is where we'll begin in a few seconds from now. I'm going to be handing this paper now for students to sign their names when already comes in. So we'll be looking at mete, which means bridal, and we will look at the different accents that are in the Hebrew. And finally, we'll be looking at what is called Shewa, which is either marking a consonant where there is no vowel, or at best the Shewa may be pronounced rapidly, um, producing what Hebrew grammar um, writers called a half vowel sound. And so that is what we will be looking at today. Now I need to remind the year three students, um, last week, to the best of my memory, I think I told you that today you'll be getting a test over lessons one and two in hermeneutics. If you haven't remembered it, um, try to make use of that hour, which starts at 12.20, I'm giving you a 10 minutes break as required by the administration of the school. So the class in Hebrew will be ended at 12.20, and we will be starting, God permitting, at 1.30 to make the time with the hermeneutics um, test. It won't only be a test, we will be starting lesson three concerning the use of prayer in trying to find the correct meaning of the scriptures. We're now going to be going to God in prayer. Father in heaven, I give you thanks for another class that you have given to me and to these students. We look to you, O Lord, as the great source of all knowledge and wisdom and understanding and truth. And ask that you who created our brain, you who created our mind, you who gave us intelligence, will expand our wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, intelligence, and mind, and brain to comprehend and completely understand what we are about to continue studying in the Hebrew language. Without you, we are nothing, and without you, we can do nothing. 
but through you we can do what we might find on our own impossible to do. For with you all things are possible. And so we entrust our minds into your hands, ask that you will help us to become masters of this language, the first language in which you revealed your precious truths in the Old Testament scriptures. Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. Yesterday we looked at consonants used as long vowels. We also looked at the open and closed syllables. And now we come to methe. If you don't understand methe, I heard someone speaking. Any question? It's okay, if you have a question, you can ask or comment. Methe. If you don't recognize methe, don't worry. It's not an English word. It's not a French word. It's not a Spanish word. It is a Hebrew word that means a bridle. A bridle, um, somebody turn off the light for me. A bridle is a leather strap that is strapped around the horse's mouth in order to control the movement of the horse. It's like a steering wheel in the car. If you don't control the horse, then the horse is not going to go where you want it to go, and it's not going to stop when you want it to stop. And so it has to have a method or a bridle on its mouth so that when you want it to slow down and stop, it will do so. Well, in the Hebrew language, there is a word called method, and in English it means a bridle. Now, this is therefore referring to a pause in the pronunciation of a word. Just like in English grammar, we have different pauses, like a comma, semicolon, a colon, and a full stop or period. So in the Hebrew language, they have a system of pausing. And one of, the, one of these is method or bridle, which indicates that the reader must pause. The symbol of method is a short vertical stroke, looking just like this. Short vertical stroke placed at the left of a vowel. So let us say that the vowel is here, whatever it is. The vowel is here, and the methe goes to the left of the vowel over there. So, when a natural pause occurs within a spoken word, that pause is indicated in writing by a methe. Natural pause meaning, as you are speaking to someone, you just find yourself instinctively knowing, I need to stop temporarily or briefly right now before I speak another word, or before I continue the pronunciation of the word. Okay, so that's what method is. Not really hard to understand. It's a pause. Now we come to accents. Accents are mostly placed on the last syllable. Now, you won't see an accent mark in the Hebrew grammar or in the PowerPoint lessons that I am sharing with you. And the reason for that is most of the accents are placed on the last syllable of a word. And it happens so often that it is not necessary to point out every time it is to be accented. So it's just left without an accent, and the reader is to understand 
that if you don't see an accent at any part of the, of the word, then the accent is on the last syllable of a word. When you will see an accent symbol is when the accent is not on the last syllable. But if there is no accent on the word, no symbol that is, that tells you that an accent is to be there, it means that the last syllable is to be accented. Not with a symbol, but with your voice. Stressed or emphasized with your voice. For example, in the word Adam, A-D-A-M, the name of the first human being whom God created. The Hebrews pronounced the, the name Adam. They didn't say Adam. They said Adam because the accent was on the last syllable, D-A-M. Daleth, Thomas, A, Mem. Adam. So that's how you know that the accent is present when a syllable is stressed, even if you don't see an accent mark. If the accent is placed on the syllable that is before or next, immediately next to the last syllable, it is indicated by the arrowhead symbol, what you see here. I called it arrowhead because it reminds me of an arrow. An arrowhead that you put at the top of a stick, put into a bow, draw the bow back, and the arrow will go forward. An arrowhead symbol is the customary or regular way of indicating that there is an accent on a syllable. But you won't find this on the last syllable because the last syllable is usually the part of the word that is accented. Accent is on some other part of the word, like the syllable right next to the last syllable, which is the only other place in the word it could go. Then you will see the symbol that that part of the word is to be accented. Like yesterday, when we were looking at different words, we saw melek, M-E-L-E-K. The accent is on me, which is not the last syllable, but the syllable just before the last syllable. Or derek, D-R-E-K. De, the first syllable, right next to the last syllable, um, has this accent mark, or nefesh, N-E, ne, has the accent mark because it's not the last syllable that is accented in those words. Accents are never placed on the second syllable before the last syllable. So if a word has three syllables, you're not going to find any accent mark on the third syllable, which is the, the syllable away from the last syllable. Okay, so it's never placed on the second syllable before the last syllable. The only other place that it could go other than on the last syllable is the syllable right next door or right beside the last syllable, but not any earlier syllable than that. A metheg often appears, now a metheg is not an accent mark, so this is really something different. A metheg often appears two places before the accent. Okay, so if you see a, a line, a vertical line to the left of a vowel, in a word, it is two places before where the accent would be in a word. And because you are pausing, it is like a half accent, but it's not officially an accent. It's a pause. When you pause in a word, 
there is a sense in which you are putting a stress on that syllable. That's why they call it a half accent. Now we come to the Shawa. This is lesson number nine, which is dealing with Shawa. S-H-E-W-A. Again, if it is not a familiar word to you, don't feel ashamed. Don't feel worried. Because it is not an English word, nor a French word, nor a Spanish word. It is a Hebrew word. What does Shiva mean? The Shiva is like a vowel that is horridly pronounced, like the E in because. The English word because is the E in because is pronounced so quickly that sometimes you can hardly hear it, the chorus, the chorus. It's like you jump from B to C and you leave out the E, the chorus, the chorus, the chorus, the chorus. Well, that is what a show is like. It is a horrid pronunciation. It has an S sound in it. The show has an S sound but it is horridly pronounced. It's a horrid F sound. Like your French word, au revoir. A U R E B O I R, which means what? What does au revoir mean in English or au revoir? Goodbye. 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 So the A U R E. B O I R is so horridly pronounced, or the E is so horridly pronounced, sometimes you can't even hear the E. Because in common usage, you say what? Agua. You don't hear the E at all. So that is like our Shiva. It's horridly pronounced, you go over it so fast that if you're not careful, you don't even hear the E sound in the word. Okay, so it is not actually a vowel. However, under certain conditions, it can be like a half a vowel. Some shawas are pronounced, but others are not pronounced. Those that are not pronounced you may say that they are showing um, where a consonant is that does not have any vowel underneath it. Okay, so um, let me see if I can give you an example. Okay, so I'm going to be taking this up here. And I'm going to illustrate it. So some shawas are not pronounced. Let me give you a word. I'm going to give you three words. Okay, now, viewers, I hope you can see this better. I'm using black ink today. Yesterday I used blue ink and I could hardly see it on YouTube. So, here is 
maybe this time it will be better. You think the light would help them to see better on the whiteboard? Or you can turn the light on for me. All right, I hope this will be better. You, you should be able to see the black much better than the blue. Okay, this is Okla. Now you have Aleph, followed by Thomas A, the long R sound, and you have Kaf, and notice underneath Kaf you have two dots, like our colon in English, one dot above the other. Now there is no vowel under the Kaf, and this Shua is not even pronounced. You say Ok, you don't say Ok, you say Ok. So this shiva is silent, you call this silent shiva, and all it is doing there is to show you where there is a consonant that has no vowel. But there is no vowel, all you have is a shiva that is not even pronounced. Okla, that means food, what Robens was eating not too long ago, some nice rice. The fried rice, <laughs> the fried rice, okay, okla, he was eating okla, okay, that's what he was eating, okla, but there is no pronunciation of the shiwa, it's a silent shiwa, it's simply marking the place where a vowel otherwise would be, but is not there. Here is another word, and this is Ab Ra. This is Aleph. This is Pata, our short A. This is Bet. And this is the silent Shiva underneath the Bet. It's pronounced Ab, not Abe. Ab Ra. It marks the place where a vowel normally would be, but it is not there. And so the Shawa takes its place. This is our name, Abraham. Before he was called Abraham, he was called Avra in the Hebrew pronunciation. In the English pronunciation, we say Abraham. Then this is what his name was changed to. This is what you'd see in Genesis and the Hebrew Bible. You have Aleph, Patak. Patak is a short A sound. You have Beth, and you have the silent Shiva again, marking the place where normally you would have a vowel, but no vowel is there, so it takes its place. It doesn't leave the consonant without having something underneath it. So you have Av, you don't have Abek, you have Av. Then you have Ra, Ham, Abraham. We pronounce it in English, Abraham. They say, Abraham, Abraham. Okay. Let me give you one more word before I move on. And that is the name Israel in Hebrew. Yod, Yeri, Short Yeri, Shin, Silent Shavuot, Rish. Thomas A, Aleph, Sereg, Lame. Okay. Now this is Yisrael. Sorry, not, not Yish. The, the dot should be on the left side of Shin. Now notice Yod, short Iri. There's a tiny dot there. I hope you can see viewers. Shin or sin, not that you commit sin, this is the letter sin in the Hebrew alphabet. And underneath it you have the silent shiva marking the place where a vowel could be, but is not placed there. You just don't leave a consonant without a vowel or something underneath it like a shiva. So a shiva is there. And you have resh, kamis, a, aleph, sere, lamen. Yisrael. You don't say Yisek. You don't say Yisek Rael. You say Yisrael. And that in English is pronounced 
Israel. Israel, most people say Israel rather than Raya. Israel. Okay, so that is what I mean then on the PowerPoint when I speak about Shiva not being pronounced. Okay, so some Shiva's are pronounced, but others are not pronounced. When a consonant has no vowel underneath it at the beginning of a word or in the middle of a word, then the symbol of Shua fills the gap under it. Okay, that is what I have shown you. That's what I have illustrated. That if you have in the beginning of a word or in the middle of a word a consonant that has no vowel underneath it, then the symbol of Shua fills the gap underneath it. Now, in this lesson, we are looking at two kinds of Shua. The first one is called simple. Don't really think it is so simple though. The rules are difficult. But it is called simple. It is simple Shua and two composite Shua. Now composite is related to the word compose. When you compose something, you bring different things together. Like when you're writing a composition, you bring different paragraphs together and you bring different ideas together. Composite also could be said to be compound. So you don't just have a simple shiva like this, but there is something added to the two dots and you bring it together to form a composite shiva. You will see that in a few minutes from here. Okay, these are the rules governing the simple shiva. Shiva is to be pronounced when it begins a syllable at the beginning or middle of a word. We just deal with that first. Take a little value. Okay, let me just erase this. This whiteboard is not really yeah. working. Um, on my slide? Yeah. Um, simple show up on the on the um, Or I'm gonna be sending you a Um, let me see what you're talking about. Oh, it comes down like that. Are there any technological people in here that can fix, fix that? Yes, uh, he's a technological person. <laughs> Let me just erase something here. Okay, so we're looking at Shiva is to be pronounced when it begins a syllable. So let me give you an example. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to be writing the name of Solomon in Hebrew to give you an example. name Shalomo. You have Shin, which is an SH sound, and underneath the Shin you have the Shiva. Now notice that Shiva is at the beginning. It begins a syllable. Here is a syllable, Shin. And when it begins a syllable, at the beginning of a word, or the middle of a word, it is to be pronounced. This Shiva begins the name Shalomo. Shalomo means Solomon. Shalomo is the Hebrew word which is brought into the English as Solomon. Let me give you another example. We're going to look at the name Samuel in Hebrew. Okay, so here we have SH, the Shin, and the Shua, the Mem, and the Shurek, which is the long U sound, the Aleph, the Sere, the long E sound, and Lamed at the end, Shemuel. So when the simple Shua is at the beginning of a syllable, whether it is in the beginning of a word or in the middle of a word, it is to be pronounced like Shalomo, our Solomon, Shemuel, our Samuel. Okay, now let us see what else is said. Number one, Shua is to be pronounced when it begins a syllable at the beginning or middle of a word or silent when it ends or closes a syllable in the middle of a word. So it is to be silent when it ends a syllable. It is to be silent when it ends a syllable. Okay, let us look at an example. when it closes a syllable. Or going back to Okta again. Going back to Okta. Aleph. Um, is the two. Kaf and the Shiva underneath the Kaf, Lamed comes A and B. Notice. Here is a syllable. It's a closed syllable. A closed syllable consists of a consonant, a vowel, and another consonant. So it is in a closed syllable. When the Shiva is in a closed syllable, it is not to be pronounced. It is pronounced when it opens the syllable, when it's in an open syllable, 
but it is not to be pronounced when it is in a closed syllable. Again, it is to be pronounced when it is in an open syllable, like Shemuel, S-H-E, the E is the Shewa. But when it's in a closed syllable, consisting of a consonant, a vowel, and another consonant, it is not to be pronounced. So that's rule number one. Shewa is to be pronounced when it begins a syllable, at the beginning or middle of a word, or silent when it ends or closes a syllable in the middle of a word. Okay, number two. When shawa occurs in the middle of a word, after a long vowel, it is to be pronounced. Let me deal with that so you can understand better. Okay, I'm going to illustrate this by showing a participle on the board. This is the Hebrew word shomeri. Shem, Olem, Mem, Resh, Yod. This is um, long Karik. Then you have men. Show Marie, no. Notice. Here is a Shua. And it comes right after a long vowel. In this case, it is the long vowel Kole. The long vowel polem comes right before the mem that has the simple shawa under it. The rule is saying that if the shawa comes right after a long vowel, then it is to be pronounced. If it comes right after a long vowel, then it is to be pronounced. So you have show, me, re. Sho Marim. This word means watching or guarding or keeping. Sho Marim. So when the Shoa comes after the long vowel, kolem, it is to be pronounced. Sho Marim. Okay. Now let me finish number two. But after a short vowel, it is silent. After a short vowel, it is silent. Okay, so let me illustrate that by another word on the Shomarim. And it's the Hebrew word Yishmor, which means he will keep or he will guard or he will watch. Yod, short Karik, Shin, Shua under the Shin, Mem, Polem, Resh. Okay, now notice. Here is a short vowel peri. Can you see? Can you see? Short vowel peri. It's an isau. The shawa comes right after the short vowel peri. And the rule says that if the 
Shiva comes after the short vowel, it is not to be, or the Shiva is not to be pronounced. That's the rule. If it comes after a long vowel, like the long vowel polem, O, it is to be pronounced sho me re. But if it comes after a short vowel, like kiri, short kiri, there is no pronunciation of the shiva. It comes after the short vowel. So although you have sho marine, watching or guarding, you have yishmor, he will keep or guard or watch. The shiva is not pronounced. It comes after a short vowel. Let's look at number three. When two shawas occur together in the middle of a word, the first shawa closes the one syllable and is therefore silent, while the second shawa begins the next syllable and is therefore to be pronounced. Let me illustrate that with two examples. Get rid of these first. Our two examples to illustrate what I've just read. First of all, is the third person plural of Shamar, which is Yish Meru. This is the imperfect tense of Yish Meru, but translated as a future tense in the English. Okay, so you have Yod, Shin, Shiva, Mem, another Shiva, Resh. And Shurek. Okay. Just go ahead and put the other word. The other word is Yishpetu, they will judge. Yod, Perik, Pe, Simple Shiva. Sorry, that's not. First um, is Yod, Perik, Shin. Simple shiva, then pe. Another simple shiva, te, and then shure at the end. Or let us look. So the rule says if you have two simple shivas right next to each other, like in yish maru or yish pitu, the first Simple Shiva closes a syllable, and the rule says that if it closes a syllable, it is not to be pronounced. I will also add another rule. If it follows a short vowel, it is not to be pronounced. So both rules make this have to be silent. It's yish, it's not yishe, meru, it's yish. So this is silent. Now, another rule applies to this simple shiva over here under the men. It begins a new syllable. And when a shiva begins a syllable, the rule says it is to be pronounced. So to put it simply, when you see two shivas standing next to each other, the first shiva is to keep its mouth shut and the second shiva is to speak. The first shiva is to be silent. The second shiva is to say something. You must pronounce it. Okay? Yishmeru. They will, they will judge. No, they will keep or they will watch or they will guard. Yishpitu. Same thing over here. Simple shiva under the shin. But because it closes... The first syllable, it is not to be pronounced. It also comes after a short vowel, Kiri. 
but the second shiva begins a new syllable. The syllable is he, followed by the simple shiva he. So it is yish. This is silent. The first one is silent, but the second one must be pronounced. Yish pitu. That means they will judge. Yes, you said because of the short vowel. Yeah. Then it's followed by shiwa. Uh, it's supposed to not be pronounced. So because yeah. it starts with the next one, it starts the next a new syllable. syllable starts with a shiwa. It should, pronounce. should be pronounced. Also, whenever a shiva closes a syllable or comes at the end of a syllable, it is to be silent. So this is one syllable here. Y-I-S-H. That's one syllable. Yes, sir. One syllable. So when it comes at the end of a syllable, it is not to be pronounced. But if it begins a syllable, if it comes at the beginning of a syllable, like over here, it begins a new syllable, then it is to be pronounced. So you have yish, this is a closed syllable, and it ends a syllable. This is pe, it starts a new syllable, so it is to be pronounced. Or right, this is something you have to um, keep on reading and uh, right. and trying to fix it in your mind. It's not so easy to learn. Okay? That's why I'm using this whiteboard to try to help you understand it. Okay, so number three, when two shawas occur together in the middle of a word, the first shawa closes the one syllable and is therefore silent, while the second shawa begins the next syllable and is therefore to be pronounced. Another rule over here, number four. A shiva under a consonant which is double. That is, it has a dot in it for the purpose of repeating the consonant is to be pronounced. I'm going to illustrate that on this board after I erase it. This is the, the word Kitalu. Spell Ko. Short to read. Teth. And there is a Shiwa, simple Shiwa under the Teth. And you have Lamed. Then you have Shuret. Kitalu means they slaughter. Now notice what happens here. This is teth, and teth has a dot in the center of the word, which means that the, 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 the letter is to be repeated. There is a dot in the center of teth, which means there are two tets that you're dealing with. So actually, what you have is kof, iri, um, teth, with a shiwa under the teth, and another teth with a shiwa under the teth. Everything is double when you have this dot here. The first simple shiwa under the first teth ends the syllable. It's a closed syllable, and it is to be silent. But the second text with the simple shiva is beginning another syllable and is to be pronounced. So you don't say kit lu because there are two texts when you see this dot. With a simple shiva under the first text and a simple shiva under the second text. So you don't pronounce the first simple shiva but you pronounce the second simple shiva. 
So that is what this rule is saying. Shiva under a consonant which is double, that is, it has a dot in it for the purpose of repeating the consonant is to be pronounced. Um, let me check the time. Okay. Now, Lord willing, I've really gone over by eight minutes. We're going to be starting a new lesson next week, but I'm just going to finish the lesson on the Shiva. We only have a short um, part of the lesson left, so I'll finish that on the composite Shiva before we go on to another grammatical concept or idea. Okay. Um, so we'll take a break now, and then we will come back at 1.30, God willing, year three students for hermeneutics. Have a good weekend. And viewers, thank you for watching Introduction to Biblical Hebrew. Um, we will continue, God willing, next week, Thursday, as we continue the Hebrew class.